think what we're talking about, and you mentioned it, is choice. And our choice is really the source of our power. We may never get control, but we do always have choice, and that is our power. Mm -hmm. So when we say that somebody has a piece of our heart, or when we say that we're heartbroken and we can't get over it, what I often find is that what we really mean is somebody took a piece of our power. Mm -hmm. We gave somebody our power. We gave somebody our choice. We gave somebody kind of, you know, a little bit of our willpower, maybe some things that we didn't agree with, or maybe even we just didn't agree with this breakup, but we had to give over our power and say, okay, you know what? You want this breakup? Fine. And I think a lot of times when we find ourselves not being able to get past that heartbreak, what we really are reaching for is taking our power back mm. and taking our power back from that relationship, which the good news about that is you always can. You can take back your choice at any minute. When yeah. you realize that your heart is unlimited, You, your heart has this amazing power to love again. Um, and it's, here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you heartbreak isn't painful. It's shattering, especially when it was good and it just felt, and it just fell apart or especially when it was good. And maybe, you know, you look back and you realize, Ooh, I made some mistakes then. Uh, that's another way we try to get our power back. And that's another reason why we don't let ourselves get over heartbreak is sometimes we feel as though, Oh, if I could just, mm, if I could just redeem myself for that thing. But here's the thing. You can always move forward and move forward in a new way. I totally got off on a tangent just then. Um, I do want to remind you all, please do- um, Bring your challenges, bring your questions. Yes, please do uh, pop your pop your questions into the chat. Um, actually, I do have a couple of questions that came in. Uh, like I said, <laughs> I do have a membership called The Catalyst and that is, it's, you know, again, Nadine and I just work so well together because her membership focuses on not only the mindset of dating, but also the actions of dating, getting you coached, getting you skills, getting you introductions, um, and also includes her events. It includes a match at the end of it. If you make it to a certain point within her program, it's just amazing. Um, my Catalyst members, we're focusing on self-love. We're focusing on your life purpose and following that life that you desire. So it really kind of blends into, into each other really quite well. So a couple of my members um, did ask a couple of questions. Are you game? Yes. Okay. Can we, uh, be, before you, before you go there, and since we're talking about the memberships, I want to, I want to just chime in and say, I'm personally a, uh, a, a member of the catalyst as well with Chelsea and, if you want to work any inner child, uh, any, you know, if you just want to reset at the beginning of the day, just to start your day better. Um, there, she has so many resources. I mean, you can, you can mention more than those, but I've done the inner child and it's amazing. I've done the, the, the gratitude in the, in the beginning of the day. And it's amazing. Uh, you have an anxiety reset. You have so many, so many things that are very good um, complements to dating, to your dating journey as well. You know, so I, I don't, I don't say do one or the other. I say do both because the the better that you get inside, the better that you can find a partner. I think that's that's amazing. But I let you go through the questions. Let's let's maybe pause a second. Does anybody wants to have a question in the chat before we start with the with the members' questions? Yeah. Um, and as we're, let me go ahead. We're good. All right. Yeah. I've got my view on speaker because we're recording this. So uh, if you want to check, check in and let me know and see everybody. Um, and yeah, thank you. Um, I'm so glad that those meditations have helped. And um, I think we'll save just a little time at the end. But, um, you know, I do have a little giveaway from that uh, for everyone who attended today. So thank you. Uh, let me go ahead. And I've got that chat closed, but I've got that popped up. Uh, so one of them is... How do you know if somebody is really trying to find love? I text and I talk to them for weeks. We have a great, a few great dates and then I get ghosted or worse, find out they're cheating. I, I, I honestly, 
I've got some opinions on this, but I really think that this one falls into your court. I feel like you, I feel like this would be a really good one for you, Nadine. Okay, let me rephrase it. Well, let me, let's recap it. So they've had a few dates. They, they're texting, but why do they say they're cheating? The, it, it sounds to me, so from the question, I text and I talk to them for weeks. We have a few great dates. Then I get ghosted, ghosted, or worse, find out they're cheating. So I think this is a pattern okay. that they're yes. seeing in their own life. Um, <clears throat> they're not on this call, so uh, they'll get the recording of this later. But um, okay, sounding from the energy of that question, it's sounding like it's a pattern for them. Okay, perfect. Um, and I and I love the question because there there are many things going on there. First of all, if you have not had the exclusivity talk and they are seeing other people, they are not cheating. They are meeting other people because you haven't had that. You haven't established exclusivity. In the beginning of dating, you are meeting people and you are having date to get to know each other. It is not exclusive and it doesn't mean that people are just, just going out with you. With you. It, it, they can be meeting other people. So first of all, I think that that person has not gotten enough information and enough communication on their own relationship to know with this person so and and that's why the the ghosting um the ghosting part of it is a lack of communication as well a lot of people just don't want to just don't want to say i'm not feeling it i don't have a romantic connection um we could be friends a lot of people don't want to do the rejecting so they ghost what I always recommend, I always tell my members, hashtag no ghosting, because it is honestly, well, I believe in karma, I do. And I also think that if you don't want it for yourself, you don't do it to others. So if you are going on two, three dates and you are uncertain on where you stand, you talk about it, you get curious about what's going on and you ask questions. So the people, the reason with ghosting is I already texted twice and they're not answering. And sometimes people think that they're being ghosted just after two or three days when it just means, it might mean that that person doesn't like to communicate via text. It might mean that they felt that something you said was rejecting them it can be so many things and if we don't explore those things then we don't know if 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 it was us or if it was them honestly we have to take responsibility of our part we cannot be saying we cannot be saying oh this is he goes to me he acted like this or she acted like this she did this what we need to think is how what did I do to grow this relationship? What it, did I do to communicate better, to communicate my needs in terms of communication, to communicate my needs in terms of I'm only seeing one person at a time, to communicate all, all of these things. So my, my best advice in those, those cases is go back, be, be brave, and leave your pride on the side and say, hey, I noticed you haven't texted. It could be that you met somebody else. It could be that um, you just weren't feeling it. I love to know just for my own sake. And if they don't answer, and don't be attached to the outcome. If they don't answer, then don't answer. But at least you said what you were thinking and what you were feeling, and you can be proud of that. I I really love that. 